The University of Michigan. In the 1930s, young people from all over the world came to this center of academic excellence to learn, to grow, to become the men and women they were each destined to be, including a young man named Raoul Wallenberg, one of the University of Michigan's most distinguished and revered graduates. Raoul Wallenberg was the son of a, of a very well-to-do uh, noble Swedish family. He could have gone to many schools but chose the University of Michigan because of the Midwestern values and morals that his grandfather was looking for in sending him to a public university rather than one of the Ivy League schools or schools on the West Coast. People who saw Wallenberg did not see a dashing adventurer. They did not see someone who was a, a noble hero. He behaved at the University of Michigan as any other student would. He rode his bicycle, he ate hot dogs, he was an ordinary guy. There are extraordinary people that show up in our lives. We may not know how extraordinary they will be in the future. Raoul Wallenberg at the University of Michigan, no one ever knew what he would then go on to do a decade later. After Adolf Hitler invaded Poland in 1939 and conquered much of Europe, the German dictator began in earnest his plan to systematically exterminate Europe's nine million Jews. It was very scary living in Budapest in those last few months of the war. The Hungarian Nazis were randomly killing people on the street. They were coming into houses and taking people away. At the request of the United States War Refugee Board in 1944, Raoul Wallenberg accepted an appointment at the Swedish Embassy in Budapest so he could take advantage of his country's diplomatic immunity. It was here in this besieged city that he was to lead a mission that would change his life and the lives of thousands of others forever. He left a very comfortable life, a wonderful family, probably a promising career because he was very bright and very capable uh, to undertake a mission of rescuing a people that were not even his own people. Sweden was a neutral nation in World War II and so he had the freedom to travel where others did not in Europe and he was sent to Budapest to save as many Jews as he could in the final months of the war. Raoul Wallenberg put his life on the line by going to safe houses, by issuing passports, by going to the death marches, by using his own money, using the money given to him to do this to save people. I personally uh, uh, owed my life to Wallenberg. I lived in a Swedish protected house which was the result of Wallenberg's activity. While Raoul Wallenberg's heroic actions remain unknown to many, over the years a devoted group of individuals committed themselves to finding a way to honor not only Wallenberg's legacy, but also his connection to the University of Michigan and the Ann Arbor community he loved so much. The purpose of the committee was to create an endowment and to define the way in which this endowment could be used to honor Raoul Wallenberg. And it wasn't until the 50th anniversary of his graduation that Andy Nagy and Irene Butter got together and then pulled others of us in. And when we tried to decide what would be the best vehicle to do this, it was a lecture that we could tell the story year after year. The Raoul Wallenberg lecture is about an exemplary kind of action which must remind us of what it is to be human. The lecture series so far has exceeded uh, my expectations by far, and I never would have dreamt that we would have been able to attract the kind of people we brought here. Ladies, gentlemen, and children, I'm deeply moved by the warm welcome you extended to me, and I am very grateful for all courtesies. Recipients of the Wallenberg Medal are people who have found themselves in a moment of crisis, being required to take extraordinary action. 
not an instant of crisis like a train wreck, but a moment of moral crisis that takes enormous courage to make a decision to act on behalf of other people. Miprise was the woman who sheltered um, Anna Frank and her family. After they were arrested and when Meep realized that Anne wasn't coming back, she turned over the diaries to the world. Elie Wiesel was the first and for a while the only person who publicized the Holocaust, the horrors of the Holocaust, what happened, who was involved, who was helpful. So he became a very visible example of uh, the Holocaust and uh, and the history of the Holocaust. The Dalai Lama is the spiritual and secular leader of the Tibetan people and a um, very important figure in Buddhism in general. He had hoped to get the um, Tibet um, returned to the Tibetan people, but um, um, that hasn't happened. Uh, China is still ruling Tibet. John Lewis was a very important uh, young activist during the Civil Rights Movement. He was one of the major student leaders in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He did a lot and was beaten, was bloodied, went to jail, and yet that never did. He was almost killed, and yet he fought back. And 40 years later, he's still fighting, not as a member of SNCC, but now as a member of the United States House of Representatives. He's a congressman. Our 2005 medal winner, Paul Rusesa Bagina, was a hotel manager in Kigali, which is the capital city of Rwanda. And in 1994, there was a moment of, of growing violence between the two main groups of the Rwandan population. And when this broke into ethnic violence, the Tutsis began to be slaughtered in the streets of Kigali. Rusesa Bagina, who managed the most prominent hotel in Kigali, opened the doors and sheltered many, many hundreds of individuals within the hotel compound. There is a natural tendency of human beings, of all of us, to forget. We become involved in the things that we like. We have our daily lives. We work hard. We are stressed. We have families. We have things. We buy more things. There's a tendency in this country to think that so long as the price of a VCR is going down, the history of the world is assured. It is not assured. We live in a world where there's injustice, where there's oppression, where there's a need for Wallenbergs all around the world. The Wallenberg Medal is more than the physical medal itself. It's more than a cast hunk of bronze hung on a ribbon. I think there is a very simple answer of what Wallenberg teaches us, namely that one person can make a difference. You do not have to be born with special gifts or special traits. You just need a willing heart, a committed spirit, and a dedicated mentality to say, I'm going to do what I need to do. That's what it takes.